Good evening and a warm welcome to Buddhist Mahavihara's Facebook page. Tonight in the Dhammadana series, we have joining us live Dr. P. P. O. Cho. She will be sharing about the sound of the breath, Sonlan and Te Ingu meditation traditions of Myanmar. Uh, let me introduce Dr. P. to the screen. Uh, very good evening. Very good evening. Uh, so before we proceed, let me share a little bit about uh, Dr. P's profile uh, for those who have joined now. Uh, Dr. P. Pyo Cho is a senior lecturer in Theravada studies at Shan State Buddhist University in Myanmar. She is also a visiting senior research fellow at King's College in London. Uh, she has studied her bachelor's in economics and management at Oxford University, and she completed her master's in Buddhist studies at School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London in 2010. And her PhD in uh, Buddhist philosophy at King's College, London in 2014. Her research bridges the fields of Buddhist studies and Burma-Myanmar studies and primarily concerns living traditions of Burmese Theravada Buddhism in the context of modern and contemporary practices and expressions. She has published research articles on meditation, business ethics, monastic education and Burmese traditional medical system. She has undertaken meditation practices within different meditation traditions in Myanmar since 2005. She also teaches Vipassana meditation in Budapest, Hungary. Uh, now I would like to invite Dr. P to start today's session. Um, right. So um, welcome everyone and also uh, thanks very much uh, for to the organizer for inviting me to share uh, this uh, Dhamma talk uh, with everyone. Um, so um, today what I would like to share with everyone um, here is that um, it's an article, an academic article that I have written. Uh, which is um, about uh, Solon Seattle and Te Ingu Seattle, uh, Medi uh, Seattle of, of Myanmar. Uh, these uh, two teachers, meditation, med meditation teachers, um, they have founded uh, meditation traditions, uh, two meditation traditions in Myanmar. So in this uh, top, uh, in this lecture, what uh, in this talk or uh, what I will be sharing is and giving you an overview of uh, meditation traditions in Myanmar very briefly and then uh, we're going to look at uh, Sonon Seattle's life and practice uh, and then we are going to uh, focus a little bit more on Deng Seattle's uh, life and practice and then we will do some um, kind of conclusion in relation to uh, the topics that we have uh, discuss. Um, so um, <clears throat> without further ado, I would like to start uh, by briefly talking about uh, meditation. Uh, when we think about meditation in uh, Theravada Buddhism and, and Southeast Asia uh, Buddhist uh, society. So when we think about meditation, um, the first uh, Pali term that may come into your mind is uh, Bhavana. Um, and and bhavana of course is about cultivation and um, and also development um, uh, but uh, we are going to use uh, the term meditation in this talk uh, partly because um, it's a it's a well-known um, term that we have uh, been using um, in whether in an academic uh, context or in a practice uh, based context uh, so, so when we think about meditation, what what do we mean? Uh, what does it mean? It means that um, so we are going to we are talking about a range of practices um, to bring about self transformation. 
uh, for self tra transformation here we are talking about not just our uh, mental uh, aspect but also to some extent physical uh, makeup of the body so when we think about uh, mental elements or mental aspect and um, talking in terms of trans transformation uh, we are thinking uh, mainly about our responses and our thinking patterns and habits and uh, perhaps character traits as well. So how can we uh, uh, kind of uh, use a range of practices, uh, you know, or meditation objects in order to uh, get to know or cut familiar with our uh, thinking patterns, our habits, uh, as well as how we respond to certain situations that uh, we see in daily life. Um, and then there's this kind of physical element to it as well. So what do, when we think about uh, physical, uh, you know, how do we transform our physical uh, elements? Uh, well, uh, we, we, in that regard, in terms of academic research, we need more research. But uh, what I'm uh, kind of thinking about here is that, you know, when we say a, when we are experiencing, for example, anger, uh, we we have certain kind of physical uh, response to, um, you know, uh, our emotions like anger. And in that regard, um, how 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 can we use meditation in a way to uh, calm our body down or calm, calm ourselves down in terms of our physical um, physical states. So again, here we, we see that and we see the usefulness of uh, meditation practices in that regard and especially within the context of uh, uh, mindfulness, uh, meditation practices uh, and also uh, anger management and various, um, you know, more contemporary applications of uh, meditation. Of course, when we think about um, meditation or bhavana in the context of um, Buddhist society and Buddhist practices, um, the, the main aim of aim of one of the main aim of uh, meditation is to attain nibbana or liberation so it's, it's a um, kind of uh, cooling down of our uh, uh, defilements kilesa or kilesha and and kind of um, coming into uh, kind of very peaceful uh, state of of mind uh, in in a way this is one way to uh, think about uh, uh, nibbana for example uh, of course, there are more sociological um, uh, elements to thinking about what is nibbana and, and the kind of the state uh, it is. Um, for now, we are not going to go into that kind of discussion. But um, another thing is um, kind of thinking about, of, of course, we have that goal. Uh, at the end, uh, the goal of meditation. But in terms of specific aims that uh, meditation practices might kind of try to achieve is um, basically uh, in a uh, more general sense um, across Buddhist traditions, we, we have two broad aims. They are calming, so samatha practices and samatha uh, calming the mind down uh, as an initial state. And then we aim to get uh, to this kind of vipassana or vipassana uh, insight uh, into the nature of um, things. So, so these are the kind of two broad aims that we can uh, think about when we are uh, when we are kind of uh, dealing with uh, meditation. Um, another uh, kind of uh, useful way to think about meditation in a broader context um, uh, is to, especially in Theravada Buddhism, is to think about stages of liberation. So um, as some of you may know, or all of you may be familiar with this idea of the stream antara. So this is the first uh, stage um, of, of liberation where, you know, uh, you overcome certain defilements and then the next one is uh, once returner and then non-returner and then uh, arahatship or arahat you be, uh, once become uh, kind of uh, fully, uh, uh, 
wants to become an enlightened person. Uh, so uh, it's, it's very helpful for us to think about these four stages because uh, later in the talk, we will see how um, you know various uh, uh, the from the tradition itself, you know, they they think about or they relate uh, to uh, these very very famous Seattle's uh, attainments of um, liberation. Um, so, so this is just to give you an an overview of what uh, when we when we think about meditation and what it means um, in the context of this talk, as well as in, in broader context of Tirawada Buddhist societies. Mm -hmm. uh, just focusing then on uh, uh, Buddhist practices in Myanmar and Buddhism in Myanmar. So this is, uh, I would like to hear, I would like to talk to you about um, um, kind of how to, how we can, we can think about Buddhism in Myanmar, basically. Uh, so one way to think about Buddhism in Myanmar is that, well, there are two very distinctive or two unique uh, features about Buddhist, uh, Burmese Buddhism. The first one is, uh, uh, this is uh, the topic that we are covering uh, about meditation. So um, meditation is, 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 you know, in, in Myanmar, there are many different uh, meditation traditions and, and uh, meditation uh, has become very, uh, very, pop very popular. And we can regard that as, as, a, as a distinctive feature of, of Buddhism in Myanmar. Another element is uh, the study, Bariyati, particularly the study of Abhidhamma Bhittaka. Abhidhamma Bhittaka is the, uh, um, the final uh, basket, as it were, of um, the Bhittaka, so the, the, the Pali Kana. And Abhidhamma is very widely studied uh, in, in Myanmar by uh, monastic, members of the uh, monastic uh, Sangha, as well as uh, lay people. And, and the study of Abhidhamma uh, in Myanmar is, is very much kind of, to some extent, quite an in-depth study because uh, many people um, study uh, even, you know, the, the Bhattana, the final text of uh, the, the Abhidhamma Bhittaka, which is very well known as uh, one of the profound uh, teachings of the, of, the, of the Buddha. And that text itself um, is, is very, uh, well studied and, and widely uh, written about, as well as it also features in, in Buddhist uh, practices like uh, prototype practices. So when we think about um, unique features of um, Buddhism in Myanmar, um, uh, clearly uh, Abhidhamma plays a very big role. Um, so this, uh, the photo here, just to show you that how um, you know, meditation, meditation uh, is, a, is a very popular practice, uh, but also here in this picture, what you see is, uh, you know, both uh, monks, nuns, uh, as well as lay people, uh, they, they are kind of uh, reciting um, some parts of the Abhidhamma. Uh, sometimes, you know, um, some people go on to uh, recite and memorize, um, you know, the whole of Abhidhamma, uh, Bhittaka. So uh, if we can bear that in mind, if, if we can keep that in mind, um, later, uh, in, in the later uh, talk, uh, in, you know, later in the talk, we, things will become uh, um, clearer uh, in a way. So, um, here, what I then would like to uh, focus is um, thinking about, uh, you know, uh, the modern Vipassana movement. Um, partly because um, around about, you know, 19th century, um, meditation or Vipassana meditation became very, very popular. Uh, in, in Myanmar and then later in the 20th century and then 21st century, it has kind of spread to, uh, uh, you know, other countries as well as in the West as well. Um, and and there's, of course, there are other 
uh, multiple factors actually kind of um, influencing this uh, what is now global uh, phenomena in terms of uh, meditation and vipassana practices. Um, but I, here, I, I won't go into that. Uh, what I'm just presenting and sharing with you here is uh, is a, a Bami's kind of response to, um, uh, you know, the what uh, respond to the socio-political situation in uh, and our colonialism, um, and, and uh, especially in the context of uh, British colony. So, in the nineteenth century, uh, you know, Burma was under the British colony, and then um, so there was a, a very strong sense of uh, the fear of decline of um, uh, the Buddha's teaching, uh, the Buddha Sasana. So, um, you know, whether uh, you look at the uh, members of the monastic uh, sangha, or uh, among uh, even among lay people, there was a, a real sense of uh, of uh, fear of um, the, the the Buddha's teachings coming to an end. So, so um, they you know, they mean uh, the Burmese monks as well as. Uh, very educated uh, lay people as well as uh, ordinary people, they have um, turned to uh, Buddhist teachings, um, uh, especially the meditation um, and also um, uh, the study itself. So the study of the text, so the, so the periyati, uh, the learning of the text. And of these, um, Lady Siaro, uh, Venerable Nyana, uh, he he was one of the uh, most kind of prominent uh, teachers, who was uh, you know very who who was very popular in the sense that he wrote many many texts as well as he encouraged lay people to uh, study Abhidhamma as well as to practice meditation, and 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 around him there were many uh, different Buddhist groups. Um, actually came, came in to uh, support him and he actually encouraged the study of uh, Abhidhamma as well as uh, meditation. Uh, another very famous, uh, uh, in, very influential Seattle uh, uh, was uh, Mula Mingon Jidawana Seattle or Unarada. And again, he he played a, a very key role in terms of promoting uh, vipassana uh, meditation among uh, lay people, and and you know that that became very much the focus of uh, you know uh, a Burmese response to uh, colonialism and imperialism, so, you know all the uh, socio political. Uh, uh, conditions that they they, they they are trying to overcome uh, and they are try, trying to overturn as well. So um, within that context, the the uh, the rise of meditation, uh, vipassana meditation, uh, came about. Of course, in in earlier um, uh, parts of um, Myanmar history, Burmese history, uh, you know, we we to be honest, we know very little about that. Uh, currently, uh, we need more research on that. But within the 19th century context, uh, although I'm highlighting only two um, Seattle's here, there were also other uh, key meditation teachers, which we will uh, turn to later. But here, what I want to um, highlight here is that although uh, Abhidhamma studies in Myanmar at that time was uh, becoming very popular and and kind of spreading amongst uh, lay people, lay, 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 lay. Um, the Abhidhamma studies, uh, it, it, it has been very slow in terms of uptake uh, of Abhidhamma studies in the, in the global context. Um, although it is changing now because uh, many uh, meditation practitioners uh, in other other parts of the world, they are becoming more and more interested in Abhidhamma um, and they want to um, study more and more about it. So let's look at a little bit about um, meditation 
uh, tradition and meditation teachers, especially uh, the kind of monastic, monastic founders as well as lay meditation teachers. This is, uh, this is from my ongoing research into meditation traditions in Nama. And as you can see here uh, in the chart, uh, although it's, it's um, showing kind of a selective uh, 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 vipassana tradition and vipassana teachers. So we have uh, Lady Seattle, uh, of course, at the uh, you know here, and then we have other uh, Seattle's and teachers um, that I'm actually highlighting. Uh, another one that we uh, discuss uh, in previous slides is uh, Mula Mingon Seattle. Of course, Mula Mingon Seattle is well known to to having um, kind of uh, teaching uh, Mahasi Seattle. So Mahasi Seattle at one point uh, who went to uh, Mula Mingo Seattle and practiced under him. So so there's a there's a link uh, between uh, between the, the lineage. Uh, and then Lady Seattle and uh, Seattle uh, uh, So Anaga Seattle G's methods. Uh, there's a there's there's a, a clear link between that. And then there is uh, Seattle Ji and Upake uh, meditation uh, uh, tradition, you know, the, the meditation tradition that uh, founded by uh, Seattle Upake, uh, who, uh, who was uh, the, uh, the teacher of uh, Goingaji, uh, Seattle Goingaji. Um, so, so there's a, a clear lineage uh, of meditation uh, teachers. And of course, these uh, group of uh, teachers, they, they play a very important role in terms of uh, spreading Vipassana meditation, uh, not just in Myanmar, but also uh, across, uh, you know, around the world as it were. Um, so these meditation teachers, they, 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 they are, um, uh, their teachings, um, most of the time it's, Based on uh, on Buddhist texts and, and and literature, uh, we can see that, for example, uh, in Lady Seattle's uh, case, for example, uh, Abhidhamma, uh, Abhidhamma uh, teachings as well as uh, other uh, Sudanta or Sudas teaching teachings from the Sutta, uh, they are very important. Uh, Mahasi Seattle as well. Mahasi Seattle, uh, for example, use. Uh, uh, Mahasati Patana Sutta as, as one of the foundations. Of course, he also talks about uh, Abhidhamma uh, teaching as well. So, so uh, you know, the, the kind of teachings that we find in Abhidhamma. Um, another uh, Seattle that we, uh, I like to mention here or, or highlight here is uh, Pa'al Seattle. So Pa'al Seattle again here, uh, he, he is also teaching uh, meditation uh, and his teaching uh, kind of closely follow uh, Visuddhi Magga uh, uh, method as well. So, so uh, one would go through different stages of jhana and so forth. So, so it's a little bit uh, very similar to um, uh, it, it closely linked to uh, to we, um, the the kind of uh, uh, guidance that we find in uh, uh, Visuddhi Magga. Um, and then we have uh, Solon Seattle so, and Tengu Seattle. So the, these two I have highlighted here um, in the same color because if we look at, at the kind of uh, textual base or whether they have any textual basis, um, they don't have any. Um, and and there's, there's a reason for it. We will, we will see more closely, but here, um, um, is that you know they, they are uh, they are they are different traditions. The way to think about Solo and Dengu tradition is that they are different traditions. Although the in, initially the practice will be very similar, or the practice is quite similar, and they are founded by different uh, Seattle's. So Solo Seattle, Venerable Ukui, and then Dengu Seattle, Venerable Uokata. Uh, so so. Um, they, they are quite different. Um, for those who are interested in uh, meditation 
tradition and lineages in Myanmar, I, I would actually encourage to see uh, uh, Gustav Hoffman's uh, PhD thesis, which is uh, freely available online. And, um, you know, he covers or he traces meditation lineages in Myanmar. Um, so let's now look at uh, Solon Seattle's uh, uh, life and practice. So Solon Seattle, uh, he, he, he was born, uh, you know, towards, uh, towards the, the later part of the 19th century and uh, in, in Upper Burma. Um, he was sent to a monastery for education, um, you know, at that time, a monastery, Buddhist monasteries are the, one of the, uh, well, uh, you could say, we could say that the key source, uh, key source of education for, for uh, boys. And, and <clears throat> so he was sent to a, mo a local monastery for education, but he didn't learn any, uh, or he made very little progress in terms of education, his education. Um, and then later in his life, he became a farmer, um, and he he got married. Uh, so, um, and then he was kind of um, uh, he was a farmer, and then providing uh, for his friend, family. But um, the sto the the story goes that you know when um, uh, the the whole. Uh, Burma or the, the, the at least in Upper Burma, when they had this kind of famine and drought, uh, although other families were struggling, the um, uh, or um, Jordan's uh, uh, Solon family, they were they were doing relatively well, and so somehow if the the belief among Burmese people even nowadays is that if you are uh, if your business is doing quite well, um, the belief is that there might be other kind of uh, misfortunes, especially in terms of health and um, uh, health. So, so uh, uh, Solon Seattle had this kind of very strong fear of death um, at that time, and so he 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 started looking for uh, a way out as it were. So he, he asked around and, and whether, you know, some people encourage him to uh, do meditation, but he wasn't sure whether he, you know, because he, he knew uh, very little about or nothing about uh, the Buddhist text. So he was not sure whether uh, someone who is uh, uneducated in, in the sense of not knowing the text could actually do the practice, undertake the practice. Um, but other people uh, around him, they, they uh, assure him that, well, yes, you can do the practice. You don't need to know the, know the text. So he started with mindfulness of breathing. Um, and because he was still working at that time, he, uh, he would try to, he tried to put mindfulness in terms of uh, his daily practices. And that's where, um, you know, he would um, do the normal kind of daily routine and he would ensure that there's uh, mindfulness of sati uh, always there. Um, and then he also, during his free time, he would then practice uh, mindfulness of breathing. And uh, when, when, you know, when we say mindfulness of breathing, it's not just uh, normal breathing. Uh, for for Solon Seattle and Teng Seattle, the, the breathing technique is is quite uh, quite strong, quite forceful, um, and and they will try to uh, use that kind of breathing technique, which is quite similar to uh, yogi or, or yoga, uh, some of the yoga meditation tradition. You know the the, the techniques that they use there, um, and then the story is that. Uh, Solon Seattle became uh, enlightened, and then um, he he then get uh, got ordained. But uh, as his teaching and and has as his kind of uh, uh, became uh, his followers became very kind of uh, large, uh, there were uh, educated monks who came to uh, test his uh, knowledge of the uh, of the, the, the 
of the Dhamma. And there was, a, you know, a very rare recorded uh, accounts of uh, Q&A between educated monks and, and Solon Siarojins. So, so uh, uh, educated monks, uh, very senior monks uh, from teaching monasteries, they would come in and uh, question uh, uh, Solon Siaro. Um, so just to uh, cover the kind of, uh, or sh just to share about the uh, Solon Siaro's meditation practice, his late name was Ujodin. That's why I'm using uh, Ujodin here. So he, he, uh, he started as a layman and, and started practicing meditation. Um, so how, how, do, how did he start? Uh, well, is he started with noting, so in-breath and out-breath. So he started with this kind of uh, noting uh, in-breath and noting out-breath. Um, this is uh, slightly similar to uh, Mahasi uh, um, method, although it is, there's a, 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 a kind of um, a difference. A key difference is that although it start with one started with, or he started with noting, he then quickly move on to the awareness of the touch of the breath. So he had noticed that it's it's not the breath itself, but he he emphasized the touch of the uh, of the of the breath, and then. Um, of course, there's this kind of awareness, but then again, he emphasized another layer as a way uh, to guard and watch this awareness, uh, awareness of the touch of the breath with sati. So here you have sati. So if you like, you start with the uh, uh, kind of awareness of in-breath, out-breath, and the awareness of the touch of the breath, and then guarding and watching this awareness with sati. So, so it's, it's a very uh, kind of subtle way to uh, observe and uh, to use sati to observe the awareness. Um, so in Myanmar, we would say uh, touch, so T, and then uh, consci sense consciousness. So this is awareness and mindfulness. So these this three components would come together. In, in Bamis, we would say uh, T, D, the D. So T, touch, uh, the, the sense consciousness, awareness of the touch, and then mindfulness. So if you establish this uh, three steps uh, in daily activities, um, Seattle uh, said that it, it's you, you would uh, sure you, you would uh, be able to develop uh, mindfulness as well as uh, concentration. So uh, Sati and Samadhi. So uh, from uh, his own word, uh, touch and sense consciousness, one must be rigorous, uh, rigorously um, mindful of these two. When there is touch, sense consciousness arises. When we guard and watch the sense consciousness of the objects, our job is done. So, so it's about, um, uh, you know, how we uh, bring these three elements together. Um, and, and it's uh, very much emphasized in, in um, Solon Siaroji's uh, method. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, through that uh, he, he, he developed different stages of uh, liberation or he attained different stages of uh, liberation um, according to his uh, um, geography. Uh, we, we, we know that he... Um, uh, he was uh, known to be uh, 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 to attain a uh, hardship. Uh, okay, so now let's look at uh, Dengu Siaroji's uh, uh, life and, and practice. Again, it's very similar to um, uh, Solon Siaro. However, uh, Dengu Siaro's, uh, he, he was married four times um, and before he got ordained or before he started practicing, meditation, he was a robber. Um, again, it's very similar to Seattle, uh, Solon Seattle. He developed this strong sense of uh, death uh, because he had this near uh, death uh, experience uh, in one of the robberies. Um, his, uh, and, and he became kind of very fearful, fearful of death. And 
initially, uh, when Deng Xiaoji started, he he followed uh, Solon's uh, methods, but he uh, in this case uh, he kind of uh, stopped everything. You know, he 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 once he decided that he would practice, he left his uh, wives, and then. Uh, he, at, at that time, he had two wives, one in 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 a village and another one in jungle. So they, um, uh, you know, uh, he then went to both of them and said, "Okay, now I'm I'm going to practice meditation." So he left them and and he gave them um, sufficient amount of money uh, according to various stories, uh, and he then went to a, a village monastery and he started meditation uh, meditating meditating for 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 16 hours a day um, again um, he then also had this similar kind of q a with uh, educated monks uh, senior monks came to uh, in a way test his uh, knowledge um, so what what does uh then uh, practice involve well when we look at his practice on, on the whole, we we can see that, that he he first he tried to uh, deal with uh, wrong view uh, and misadapted, uh, and then he, he tried to overcome craving. Dana. So these two uh, uh, elements uh, they feature quite strongly in his uh, practice as well as in his dharma talks. We have recordings of his Dhamma talks, um, uh, quite quite a large, uh, uh, a huge collection of them. Um, so overcoming wrong view. So in in uh, in the case of the Yusyaroji's practice, what does that mean? So like I said, he started with very heavy, rapid breathing. Um, and, and Partly because of this kind of uh, breathing technique, as well as uh, uh, sitting for long hours. Um, so in Dengu uh, practice, uh, uh, the practitioner would sit for two hours uh, in, in a session without moving or without changing posture. Um, and because of uh, that kind of practice, as well as normal, you know, uh, uh, our body aches and pains and they, they come up, uh, especially if we don't change our posture. So because of that, there's a very intense bodily sensation. And, and, and you know, although one try to observe arising and, and, and uh, falling away of this sensation, uh, normally, uh, uh, you know, we attach, you know, you know, that kind of pain with ourselves. So bodily sensation, we identify uh, pain as our pain, or I'm, I'm, I'm in pain, or sometimes heat as, oh, I'm so hot. You know, that kind of view is wrong view uh, because it's, we are personalizing our view and, and not seeing uh, the true nature of things, which is that our body uh, have aches and pains and, and all, the, all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Dukkha, wait a so so bodily uh, pain, bodily dukkha, bodily suffering. Um, so because of we personalize it, what overcoming wrong view here means that we 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 are there to just observe the nature of suffering, you know the uh, the arising and the falling away of our sensation, bodily sensation. So for Deng Xiaoji, he start with. Uh, his practice start with um, observing th these bodily sensation, and then uh, overcoming uh, uh, craving. So uh, the next step that he 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 you know in his practice he um, he attained was uh, as um, the sati and samadhi became stronger. He was able to uh, uh, he he developed this kind of or um, in his meditation uh, mental image nimitta uh, develop especially in relation to uh, asuba so in pure aspects of of decomposing the body decomposing so he um, you know he saw the body became 
quite foamy and bubbling and then the stomach bloating uh, bloated stomach uh, and then the maggots eating and then the body start to burn and, and falling into ashes and turning into ashes you know that kind of stages um, uh, what he said that he he dev he experienced all those things um, initially in his body and then later in uh, in in the bodies of others so in this way he overcome um, um, uh, craving but not only Overcoming craving is, is, is one aspect. And then the next stage is actually there was this kind of uh, what he experienced was there was a strong sense of uh, fear towards this impurity of the, uh, of the mind. That's where he also continued the practice. And one of the key elements here is um, the first one is to, to contemplate the four uh, great elements. So, so contemplating the body and the purse and, you know, all those, uh, the blood as uh, water element, the fire uh, burning, the body burning as fire element and so forth. And then the next stage is actually to uh, what he experienced was seeing everything in terms of cause and effect. Uh, there are causes and then there, there are effects. So uh, in his tomato, he would talk about these kind of things until he... Uh, he experienced these kind of very subtle, uh, um, I, I use the word atomic uh, units of matter, but, you know, this is just to uh, have a sense of what it might be. But uh, when we talk about uh, matter in Abhidhamma, um, it's, it's not like in, in uh, physics, atomic sense. It's, it's much more uh, subtle. And, and there's a slight different connotation attached to it. But um, he experienced this kind of thing. And, and then uh, in the final kind of um, stages, what he experienced was these kind of uh, mental attachment to things that are very subtle. So, so um, in, 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 the, in the way that when he when Deng Gusiaroji talks about his different stages of uh, attainments, he actually described quite vividly how he achieved, uh, you know, uh, yatabuddha jnana, uh, dasana, so seeing uh, and understanding the way things are. So this is, uh, you know, if you like, this is like a very, uh, the final stages or one of the final stages that he, he experienced. And, and realizing that uh, impermanence, even, uh, you know, anesa dukkha anatta or anecca dukkha anatta um, as concepts. Um, so, so he talks about very latent uh, defilements or kilesa and how to overcome that. So, so it's, it's very interesting in terms of how he experienced and he developed, uh, then Syaraji developed his, uh, his uh, attainments and, and the way that he described these things. So what I have um, mentioned here is, is different stages that uh, Deng Wuxiaroji, according to Deng Wuxiaroji, how it, he attained uh, various stages of liberations. Um, but here uh, in, on this slide, what I want to share with you is one of the key, um, key ways at the beginning to handle, uh, you know, uh, bodily sensation, uh, which most of the time quite intense and quite painful, and the, the breathing. Um, so, so here, um, this is what uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, what we call in in the Angu tradition uh, balancing, balancing the the uh, samadhi and banya. So. Um, when there is a kind of very strong, intense uh, sensation, uh, physical sen sensation, uh, you have to uh, increase the, 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 the breath, as at least the awareness of the in-breath. So here, if the degree of physical sensation is 10, the awareness of in-breath and out-breath at the nostril is 10. If the sensation increased to 20, 
samadhi increases to 20. Meaning samadhi here is you, you increase the awareness, okay? You, you increase the awareness. Do not tense the body or increase the desire to push it away, the, uh, push, push the pain away. The breathing naturally gets faster and stronger. So, of course, here, um, what we as practitioners, normally we experience that. Although he say, do not tense the body. There's a, it's almost like an automatic uh, reaction. The body automatically reacts to the pain. And that's where we get uh, very uh, tense. You know, your body uh, tense up quite uh, intensively. But over time with the practice, um, that kind of uh, tensing, uh, because you want to push the pain away, it will, it will gradually uh, ease and it will get better. So the, the graph that here is showing is that um, ideally what you want to be is you want to be on this, on this line, okay? Um, if you have, um, say, if you have too much uh, Vedana here, um, you have too much pain here and you can't concentrate and the balance, uh, the mind is not at the equilibrium um, and uh, you get more agitation. But if you have too much kind of uh, breathing rate, higher breathing rate and therefore higher samadhi, um, here again, uh, your mental state becomes too relaxed. So it's not in equi equilibrium. So essentially you want to be on this line. Uh, so where you adjust the vedana uh, or adjust the breathing rate or awareness of the breathing rate to uh, vedana. Um, this is what um, this graph is showing. Uh, just to wrap up uh, 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 quickly uh, that, you know, um, so I mentioned uh, about the uh, Dengu Siaraji's uh, practice and, and, and how it uh, kind of... Uh, uh, you have to you have to do certain uh, very intense uh, intense kind of uh, practices, um, and Dengu Siado's uh, or Dengu meditation tradition in in Myanmar, uh, it has a, a headquarter like uh, Solon. Solon also has a has a headquarter and meditation teachers uh, meditation centers around the country. Dengu meditation tradition also has uh, nowadays meditation uh, centers around the country. Um, so over the next two slides, what I'm showing you is, uh, you know, the modern uh, meditation teachers, uh, contemporary meditation teachers from the from Dengu tradition. And as with uh, other uh, meditation tradition, uh, there's, there has been slight uh, adaptation or slight changes, although uh, the the founder uh, the the fundamental part of the practice uh, kind of stay the same. So you start with uh, uh, heavy rapid breathing, and then you move on to um, you know different stages as it were, according to the experience of the teacher. Um, so. Uh, Wizodia, the Ingu Meditation uh, Center in Pie, uh, which is um, about 180 miles uh, north of, of uh, Yangon. Venawa uh, Usiri um, Dama, uh, he, he is also uh, one of my teachers. Um, so I practice within uh, the Ingu Meditation uh, tradition. Uh, although I have tried, uh, uh, I have experience in, in uh, solo uh, meditation um, uh, tradition as well. Um, and also other meditation uh, traditions from uh, Myanmar, such as uh, uh, Goingaji, Siaji Goingaji's, uh, you know, uh, centers and things like that. Um, so basically what, you know, we have is during the, the pandemic, uh, period, uh, this meditation center, like many other meditation center in Myanmar, uh, they 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 had um, they, they uh, organized um, online retreats via Zoom. 
and and you can you know uh, currently there's a daily meditation uh, uh, med meditation session uh, via Zoom, which is organized by this meditation center. Um, and the way that the adaptation occurs in a in a way is that uh, what uh, these teachers now doing is kind of like a systematization uh, in the sense that you, uh, for the beginners, you would have beginners meditation retreats. And then uh, for the uh, a little bit more advanced, you have uh, another type of uh, meditation retreats. And then for advanced practitioner, you have another type. So, so there's at least three um, levels of, um, uh, you know, uh, practice as it were. And then stages of process is slightly different. Um, theor uh, theorization. Uh, this is also uh, a part of the phenomena that we see uh, within um, the Ingu meditation tradition, which is to uh, provide some kind of uh, uh, theoretical framework within which we can understand and we can practice uh, meditation uh, uh, meditation practices and and uh, Alan Seattle uh, Benawe Chandima he has written uh, three books and is is mainly about providing the theoretical framework within which we can understand um, the practice and and this um, for example this uh, the path of stream and terror meditation object practice, meditation, meditative mind and entry to the path, uh, draws on Abhidhamma and uh, especially uh, Visuddhi Magga. Um, this is, uh, you know, the this one is 2009 edition, but he also wrote uh, his first edition was in 2005. Um, he, he, he revised that version or edition uh, and publish it again in 2009. Um, but recently he has been asked by um, Sangha authorities in, in uh, Myanmar to revise it again and correct some of, um, some of the things that he, he's trying to uh, communicate through that book. Um, partly because uh, I think is he's trying to bring uh, the practice so the, the practice and the, the, the theory together. And, and in, the, in the process, there are certain, certain terminologies and certain uh, ways of, of, of writing or thinking about things. Uh, there's, it may not match uh, exactly in the way that we find in, uh, uh, in, the, in the Pali Canon as well as in the commentaries. So the Sangha, Sangha authorities, they, they have asked, um, uh, Alan Seattle, Renova Chandima, to uh, correct some of his teaching in the book and in other uh, books that he has written. So, conclusion: What can we what can we conclude from the whole kind of this talk? Um, so, when we think about meditation in in Myanmar, it is actually a lived tradition. Uh, we we, we, we mustn't really forget that. And although it's, it is obvious, it is obvious that, you know, not just in Myanmar, but in Tedavara society, meditation is a lived tradition, meaning that which, which can most of the time can be traced back to, at least in Myanmar, 19th century, but in other parts of Tedavara societies, such as in Cambodia um, and, and perhaps Sri Lanka as well, uh, we can trace back to the um, the end or towards the end of uh, 15th century. So it has been a lived tradition. Uh, what does that mean? It means that um, it, it it has changed or it has been adapted by various uh, teachers. Um, although uh, most of the teachers draws on um, authoritative um, texts such as the Pali Canon, the commentary on literatures, as well as the handbooks such as uh, Wizudi Mega. Um, it's to an extent, it's kind of being kind of uh, very adaptable, um, adaptable and, and very you know, various forms of adaptation has occurred. And of course, that has led to uh, mindfulness movement that is 
be that has spread to other countries in 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 the world. Okay, so so that that kind of adaptability is also quite uh, quite interesting aspect to think about, as well as to to appreciate as well. Um, um, development of um, a range of methods. Of course, when when uh, you know the practice like meditation has uh, has lasted for so long, um, there's bound to be developments um, in terms of the method as well as the the the, the practice and the theories that comes with it. Um, so it's also again a, a kind of a continuous process. So what I'm I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, if we think about meditation, um, the process, the, the meditation practice process is a process uh, of self-transformation. But meditation as a, as a phenomenon, if we think about it, is also a process because it has gone, um, it has been going through and it will go through many uh, developments. And then within uh, Myanmar, um, meditation tradition in Myanmar, we can say we can see that uh, you know the role of uh, abhidhamma is very significant. Um, that you know because abhidhamma uh, provides uh, you know the practitioner as a descript uh, as a prescripted prescri prescripted guide uh, to help uh, us along the practice. So it's prescribing things that we should do as a practitioner. Um, and also it's also providing a descriptive aid uh, in a sense that it's, uh, it's helping us to make sense of our own experience. So, so if we look at, uh, if we think about Visuddhimaka, for example, there are certain sessions where we, we may uh, go back or we may read through in order to make sense of our uh, experience, our med meditative experience. So we, we have to keep that in mind. Um, the, the, the last uh, slide is just a, a just a, uh, give you a, a selected bibliography because although this is a, a, a Dhamma sharing session, um, the most of the things that I have discussed uh, was uh, actually written um, in, in this or published in this article, uh, The Sound of Breath, uh, Solon and Dengu Meditation Traditions of Yama. Um, uh, it's in, um, uh, it was published in a um, academic journal, Contemporary Buddhism, and part of uh, a special volume that we, we did uh, to look at the variety of Theravada meditation and uh, the technique itself. So this is where I, uh, I will stop my uh, much sharing. Uh, if you had questions, uh, uh, you are feel free to ask. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. B, for sharing this interesting topic with, uh, with us. Uh, let me see if we have any questions. Uh, so far, there are no questions, so I will take this time to thank you for joining us today. And also, uh, I would like to take this time to thank uh, today's sponsors and uh, to thank Dr. P. Pyo Cho for joining us uh, on behalf of the committee, the monks and the management of the Buddhist Mahavihara Malaysia. And I would also like to thank uh, those who joined this session tonight. And so thank you and Suki Thank you, thank you. All right.